Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. So alhamdulillah, okay, we meet again. Uh, so today is the uh, 17th of June 2022 for our class ICT 450 KS241 2B for our lab sessions. Okay, as usual, please write down your names, ID and also groups eh, in the chat rooms and also teach your attendance eh, in the future. Okay, so for today, eh, as usual, let's recap again. So we are now in week uh, 10. Okay, so topic for today is something related to the queries and also a report. Okay, so let's continue with the module. Okay, as usual, go to GCF and learn learning. Eh, GCF learning boleh, GCF learning SF boleh. So kita akan masuk ke uh, edu GCF global dot org. Okay, okay, just click this one. Okay, select our topic. Microsoft Access. Access 2013 and continue with uh, this one. Eh, uh, 13. Eh, uh, task number 13. Creating a report. Eh, and then after that, advanced reports. Maybe we can go up to this one lah. Eh, designing your own database. Or maybe up to 17. Okay. Uh, so kita tengok mana yang mana yang mana yang okay. Eh, kalau kita kita boleh sampai kepada designing your own database, maksudnya kita boleh masuk dah nanti. Eh, so jadi uh, yang kat sini nanti dah masuk part of your project nanti. Eh, designing your own database. Okay, so kita sambung dululah. Eh, as usual, creating a report. Okay, you already semua? Semua okay eh? So slow and steady, you all follow saya juga sambil-sambil buat tu. And at the same time, okay, buka Microsoft Access 2013 dan kita buat sama-sama. Okay. So kalau kata loss, okay, boleh refer back to to this one. Okay, so kita go to task number 13. Okay, introduction or to creating a report. Okay, as usual, kita dengar video. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. At some point, you're probably going to want to present some of your data to another person. And Access lets you create professional-looking reports to do this. Just like a query, a report can pull in information from one or more tables or queries, but it gives you a lot more control over how the data looks on the page. In this video, we're just going to focus on making a simple report based on a single query. I'm going to open the orders query, but you can use any table or query that you want. And then in the Create tab, click the Report command, and your report should instantly appear. Now it's probably not going to look perfect, so at this point you can clean up the layout. And to do this, you'll need to make sure that you're in layout view. In this report, some of these columns are too wide, so I need to adjust them. When you click on a column, a yellow border will appear, and you can drag the edge to change the width. And I'm adjusting each column just enough to make everything fit on the page. If you make your columns too narrow, then you may cut off some of your data. You can also get rid of any extra fields that you don't need. We probably don't need the zip code in this report, so I'll delete it by pressing the delete key. And I'll also delete the title and these empty cells. I'm going to scroll through the report now to make sure that everything looks right. And if any elements are outside this dotted line, then they're going to be off the page when you print it. So I'm going to drag this page number over to the left. Now one thing you can't do within a report is edit records. However, you can sort and filter them. I want to just show the orders from December. So I'll right click the pickup date column and then go to date filters, all dates in period, and select December. And I'd also like these dates to be sorted. I'll right click them again and choose sort oldest to newest. When you're done changing the layout, you can switch to report view. And this will let you view it without the grid lines. And finally, we should save this report. I'll call it December orders. And now we have a report that we can come back to at any time if we want to make changes or print it.
Okay, alright. So, uh, quite simple. Kita tengok yang simple dulu. Okay, so this is how eh, it works. Okay, so kita dah tengok hari tu, kita dah ada forms. Okay, kita dah ada queries. And kita dah ada, uh, for this one, kita dah akan create a report. Okay, uh, so report ni meaning that uh, kita akan create an output. Okay, uh, okay, so bermakna kalau kita tengok tadi, dia sebut report ni is actually is based on query. Uh, maksud dia apa yang kita dah query dan kita nak dapatkan certain information katakanlah kita dah ada banyak table dia kata sama ada kita boleh query based on one table or kita boleh query uh, apa tu multiple table okey so kita buat satu-satu dulu for this one dia query from uh, apa tu one table uh, jadi once kita dah query katakanlah kita nak information yang yang tertentu saja macam kita dah buat minggu lepas katakanlah dalam table tu ada tujuh attribute Eh, ada tujuh kolom So kita nak lima sahaja So kita query lima sahaja So nanti dalam report dia akan display Only five attribute Yang yang kita tak nak tu dia tak akan display ha, So itu maksud query Maksud dia output eh, Kita sometimes kita nak keluarkan benda-benda yang penting sahaja For output Contoh Kalau kita nak dapatkan bilangan produk yang paling banyak dijual Dalam bulan Disember contohnya ha, Sekian-sekian Pekerja yang paling banyak menjual barang Eh Uh, dalam bulan Januari contohnya So maksudnya kita kena query dulu Maklumat tersebut Kita dah dapat dia punya query Dan kita akan uh, Apa tu Create a report eh, Based on that That query Okay So kita Buka Microsoft Access Okay and Access 2013 Okay kalau kita tengok pada Slide ni Okay, kita boleh follow this sample eh by download the Microsoft Access 2013 sample database. Okay, seperti biasa kita tengok balik hari tu pun kita dah download eh sekiranya file ni yang sama saya rasa tak ada masalah. Eh you all boleh gunakan. Okey, saya just gunakan benda yang sama juga tapi saya saja je buat eh 2 3 dan sebagainya lah. You all boleh gunakan yang the first one hari tu pun tak apa. Okey, so just untuk kita nak differentiate lah eh apa yang kita dah buat sebelum ni. Okay, so uh, ini seperti mana yang kita dah nampak okay, dalam video tadi. Okay, so untuk to create a report, okay, kita boleh ambil something ataupun uh, items yang kita dah buat based on the query tadi ni. So maknanya apa-apa sahaja yang ada dekat query ni, kita boleh jadikan dia sebagai report. Ha, cuma tak, tak semestinya apa yang kita query dia akan jadi report lah. Maknanya kita kena select juga apa-apa maklumat yang kita nak put as a as a report. So, kalau kata contoh uh, from that video tadi, dia akan ambil order query. Okay, this is our order query. So, maksud dia, dia akan dapat first name, eh, dia based on the query tu, last name, phone, paid, pick up date and also zip code. Ha, so, macam kita tengok itu, ada lagi beberapa maklumat yang, yang sepatutnya ada dalam table tu, tapi dia tak display eh, based on this query. Ha, jadi, kita ambil apa yang ada saja. Okay, so once kita dah klik dekat sini, Okay, kita pergi dekat database tools, eh sorry, dekat create. Okay, nampak ada perkataan report. Eh, ada sorry, ada ribbon eh, yang uh, yang ditulis sebagai report. Okay, so kita just click report. Then, that's it. Eh, automatically, terus kita boleh dapat display eh, of that report. Uh, so, it's uh, too easy. Eh, kalau kita tengok kat sini. Cuma nanti kita kena manipulate lah benda ni. Eh, maknanya kita kena buat based on apa yang kita nak. Eh, uh, based on our own preference. Okay, so untuk kali ni, kita just boleh keluar dia. Yang penting dekat sini adalah query ni. Ya, yang kita akan buat, yang kita buat uh, sebelum ni. Eh. Ha, nanti kita akan tengok lah macam contoh select, from, where. Cuma dalam kes ni, query ni dia kuat easy. Sebab kita semua main klik-klik-klik je. Macam saya mention pada hari Rabu baru ni. Eh. So nanti bila you all belajar ICT 501, you all akan belajar detail tentang query tu. Select tu apa, from tu apa, where tu apa, eh. what is the rules and so on. Tapi untuk kali ni, kita just buat gunakan Microsoft Access yang consider as a, sebagai uh, drag and drop saja. Drag and drop ni kuat simple dia kita tak nampak dekat belakang tu apa berlaku. Okey, seperti mana yang dia sebut tadi kita boleh adjust okey, the column width ni maksud dia lebar ke kolom dan sebagainya. Okey, to make sure that everything masuk dekat dalam garisan ni. Maknanya kalau terlebih maknanya nanti dia punya display tu tak cantik. Eh nanti dia akan terkeluar daripada dia punya tu. Okey, so just adjust je dan put up to our preference ok, kena uh, masukkan ikut kita punya kesesuaian lah eh, jangan terlalu pendek, jangan terlalu panjang ok, 
Ha, so contoh macam ada sebut tadi Kalau kata lah zip code ni for example Walaupun kita dah query dia keluar Kita tak nak dia display okay, Kita just highlight Klik dekat zip code And klik button delete okay, Termasuklah dia punya nama tadi ni The names of, of the column tadi tu Zip code kita delete okay, So that's it eh, Jadi kita dah dapat satu satu view dekat sini So macam mana kita nak pastikan Kita berada pada apa tu design eh, Kita boleh pergi dekat layout view ni okay, Kita pergi dekat layout view dan kita boleh nampak lah eh, report kita tu dekat mana. So, kita boleh scroll down. Sebenarnya dia buat tadi. Okay, kita down. Okay, you all buat sama-sama eh. Okay, so kalau kita tengok tadi dekat sini, page ni macam dah terkeluar. Out of range. Eh, jadi kita, kita ambil, kita just drag and drop. Kita masukkan balik dalam range ni. Okay, so once finish. Okay, kita boleh double check again. Uh, yang this one nanti kemudian lah kalau nak, nak put apa tu. Haa. Uh, The names eh Kita nak ubah nama kemudian Okay cuma tadi dia sebut Kita boleh buat based on Macam saya sebut tadi Report ni mungkin by December ha, Jadi kita kita klik dekat pick up date tadi ni Kita pergi dekat uh, Apa tadi Date filter Okay so banyak ni You all boleh try and error eh, Maknanya tengok Kalau next week tu apa berlaku This week tu apa berlaku Last week tu apa berlaku Dan sebagainya This quarter This quarter Last quarter dan sebagainya So Benda-benda ni yang you all boleh put as a report nanti. So, maknanya you all yang justify sendiri. Okay. Nak report ni quarterly ke, yearly ke, monthly ke, work up to weekly ke. Uh, to up to you all. Okay. Uh, so, for this time, dia kata apa? All dates in period. For example, kita select December. Uh, so, dia akan select all December dekat sini. Eh, 12. Okay. Uh, cuma nampak format dia ada beza sikit kan. Date format ni. Kedekat saya punya ni. 18, 12, 22, 23 Mungkin you akan dapat format yang berbeza Dia letak 12 Dekat luar ni Maksudnya dia, dia pilih Man, man, day, day, day year, year eh, Dalam kes saya ni Day, day, man, man, year, 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 year eh, ada, Year ada 4 kat sini So, terpulang Nanti yang ni pun format ni boleh ubah Don't worry Okay, kemudian tadi dia buat eh, For this one Date tadi ni Dia kata apa tadi Sort oldest to newest nah, Tak kisah lah yang ni up to us lah Nak sort A to Z pun boleh eh, Z to A pun boleh Eh, so tu pulang Jadi sekarang ni dia dah Buat hanya untuk bulan Disember sahaja Dia dah sort Yang selain daripada bulan Disember Dah tak ada dah nah, Tu contoh eh, Maknanya once kita dah finish okay, Kita boleh klik button save Go to the home Ataupun kita klik button save dekat atas ni Just click eh, Put uh, December uh, report contohnya eh, So bagi nama yang sesuai lah Supaya kita Uh, apa tu December order report Contoh Supaya senang kita nak Nak check balik nanti Ataupun kita nak uh, Nak modify balik Okay so nanti kalau kita, Once kita dah create ni nanti Dia akan Dia akan appear dekat sini Dekat report nanti Okay saya klik okay. uh, Jadi kita akan nampak Di bawah nanti akan ada Column untuk report di bawah ni So kita akan nampak dekat sini Kita dah buat December order report Eh, dekat bawah ni. So, kita ada kita ada berapa tadi kat sini? Yang pertama, kita ada tables. Kita dah create table. And then, kita dah create forms. Kemudian, kita dah buat queries. And the last one, kita buat table reports. Okay, ni empat perkara yang ada dekat dalam Microsoft Access ni lah. The main eh, things yang kita kena buat dekat dalam Microsoft Access ni. Ha, ni yang pada awal-awal lagi tu lah. Pada minggu kita start Access itu. Dia ada cerita. Ni ada empat perkara. Tables, queries, Form, so, report. so untuk kita create satu sistem okay, Especially for your project uh, Dia mesti kena ada empat item Empat uh, apa tu uh, Perkara ni Tables Of course kita kena create tables Kemudian kita kena ada form Based on the table Kita buat report And also the queries lah eh, To generate report And also to generate forms uh, Okay So settle on that part Kalau kata nak save Boleh save semula lah uh, Yang ni kita boleh open Okay kita boleh uh, Minimize Kita boleh maximize Up to us. Ha, yang penting bagi nama yang sesuai. Okay. So setakat ni ada apa persoalan tak? Setakat ni ada persoalan? Boleh follow tak setakat ni? Kena buat sama-sama. Quite simple je. Eh? Boleh follow? Boleh sir. Boleh. Ha, okay. So kita scroll. Yang ini pun kalau kata macam you all lost tadi. Boleh tengok balik dekat sini lah. One by one tadi ni. Okay. Nak delete. How to delete. Eh? How to print. Apa tu? To apa tu tadi to adjust eh, Dia punya column width and so on Okay So Kita continue with this one Printing and also saving report in print preview Okay kita tengok video ni sikit
Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Once you've finished creating a report, you can choose to either print it or export it so it can be viewed outside of Access. Make sure that you're in Print Preview, and here you have several different options for adjusting the report. The first thing you should do is click the Size command and make sure that you have the correct paper size selected. I'd like to add wider margins so that we can make notes if we need to, but you can see that now some of the data is cut off. We can use the page navigation arrows at the bottom to go to the next page, and we can see that the missing data is showing up here. We can fix this by switching to landscape orientation. Now all of the fields fit on the same page, and you could also fix it by going back to layout view and making the fields narrower so they all fit. I'm going to click the zoom drop down arrow and select fit to window so we can see how the report looks on the page. It looks like we have plenty of room for notes, and if we wanted to fine-tune the margins, then we could just click Page Setup. And finally, if you want to save ink, then you can click Print Data Only to get rid of the background colors, but I'm going to leave this unchecked because I like the formatting that we have. When you have everything the way you want it, you can click the Print command, and then set your printer settings, and click OK. Sometimes you may prefer to export a report instead of printing it. This is useful if you want to email it to someone or post it on the web. Access lets you save it as an Excel spreadsheet, a text file, a PDF or XPS file, or email attachment, and you can click More to save it as a rich text file or HTML file. In this case, I'm going to choose PDF because that's going to keep the formatting that I've applied to my report. I'm just going to save this to my Documents Library, and you can modify the file name if you want, and then where it says Save as Type, select PDF. Then click Publish, and your report will be saved to your Documents Library or whichever folder you chose. Then you can close this window. When you're done, you can close Print Preview, and it will go back to the last view that you were in. Uh, modified query ni 
Uh, okay, itu tujuan dia kadang-kadang orang export tu PDF ni So, kalau kita export tu Excel, kadang-kadang orang boleh modify tarikh-tarikh ni semua ni Kan, nanti dia boleh ubah nanti ni So, kita tak nak So, kita put as a uh, PDF Yang ni pun sama lah eh, Klik PDF eh, Kita pastikan dia punya type tu adalah PDF If let's say you want to change the name, just change the name And then after that, click publish Okay, dalam kes ini saya tak nak tak nak save lah kot eh, Kalau you nak save, boleh save Then, make sure dia masuk dekat dalam folder yang yang sepatutnya Okay So, settle on that one eh, Kalau kata dah settle untuk print Then kita boleh close Okay, ni contoh eh, yang pertama eh, Maknanya based on single table eh, Kita query based on single table Dan output dia as report pun based on the query On the single table tadi ni So, maksud dia satu table ha, Jadi, kita akan tengok the next one nanti Kalau kita query based on multiple table Apa kita nak buat ha, So, macam kita buat lah Macam contoh kalau kita ada bridge kan Eh, kita ada link antara dua entiti Kita ada bridge Jadi kita nak kena joinkan dulu Tiga-tiga table tadi ni Dan kita akan keluarkan as and out Output Dan kita query dia dulu Nanti kita dah dapat query tu Dan kita put as a report Okay Setakat ni ada soalan tak? Laju sangat ke? Boleh follow tak? Setakat ni Boleh follow tak? Boleh, boleh eh? nah, So saya make, make sure you all semua buat eh Macam saya kata tadi Kalau tak boleh follow sekarang pun Lepas pada kelas nanti, you all cuba sendiri Okay ha, Tu sebab saya pun tak nampak apa you all buat di sana tu ha, Okay, so next Kita move to the next one Okay, kita continue Advanced report option ha, Okay, dia advanced Macam apa dia nak buat ni, dekat advanced ni Okay, so kita boleh Goodwill Community Foundation Creating opportunities for a better life In this example, I'd like to create a menu that we can print for our bakery that shows a list of our products and their prices. We're going to need to create a report that uses multiple tables, and the easiest way to do that is by using the report wizard. First, we'll go to the Create tab, and in the Reports group, select Report Wizard. We'll start by choosing the fields that we want in our report. If you click the drop-down arrow, you'll see a list of all of the tables and queries in your database and we're going to add fields from several different tables. From the Categories table, we're going to need the Product Types field, and you can either double-click it or click the right arrow button to add it. Next, we'll choose the Products table, and here we'll add the product name and description. From the Sales Unit table, We'll add the product name, which in this case is just dozen, half dozen, or single. And finally, from the menu items table, we'll need the price. So all of these fields are going to be placed into our report. Now click Next. Since we're using multiple tables, we need to decide how we want the tables to be organized on the page. If we had just used a single table or query, then it would have skipped this step. In this case, we want it to be organized by the Categories table. And to the right, you can see a kind of outline which shows where each field will go. Now we'll go on to the next step. Here, you can change the way that the records are grouped by adding a grouping level. Much of the time, you won't need to do anything in this step, but if you have a very specific idea of how you want the report to be organized, then you can add a grouping level. For example, if we wanted the products to be grouped into dozen, half dozen, and single units, then we would add sales unit, and then use the arrows to change the priority. But we don't really want that here, so I'll remove this, and then click Next. Here we can sort the records by up to four fields. I'm going to sort by price, and I'll also change this to descending, so it will start with the highest price. And then click Next. There are a few different layout options that you can choose from. I'm going to select Block because it'll tend to keep things on the same line. I'm going to leave the orientation as Portrait, and I'll also leave the Auto Adjust option checked so we won't have to do quite as much adjusting at the end. And in the final step, you can type in a name, I'm going to call it Menu Report. 
And here you can choose whether you want it to open in print preview or design view, but this won't actually affect the report. When you click finish, it will create the report. And you won't be able to go back into the wizard to edit your report, but you can always go to layout view to make any adjustments that you want. And here's our finished menu. Andai kata kita nak dapatkan item soul, eh, mungkin peman. Jadi kita akan apa tu klik pada cake saja, and then dia akan nampak all this item tadi tu keluar, eh, based on the cake tadi tu. Okay, item A, B, C. Eh, kalau kata kita nak ambil bila dia jual, kita boleh masukkan date, eh, dan sebagainya. Okay, kita follow this uh, sample report tadi ni. Okay, so kita yang pertama kita select uh, categories. Okay, kemudian kita ambil product type. Nanti kita buat lepas ni. Okay, kemudian kita tengok pada menu tables. Okay, then kita select uh, apa tu menu tadi dia select apa ni? Okay, dia select sales unit ID. Okay, ada price kat sini. Okay, product names and also price kat sini. Kemudian, kita pergi by categories. Eh, the next one, kita buat by product, eh, by categories tadi. Okay, kita buat sama-sama dekat sini. Okay, so berapa table dia select ni? So, product type. Okay, kita tengok sama-sama, eh. Kita, kita follow. Okay, sebab kita nak, nak dapatkan yang sama macam yang dia buat ni. Okay, so apa yang kita nak buat dekat sini, kita pergi dekat create. Klik dekat, okay, kalau nampak dekat sini ada report wizard. Okay, okay klik report wizard. Uh, okay, so apa yang kita nak buat dekat sini, yang pertama tadi dia kata dia kita nak pilih table apa tadi, yang pertama. Okay, kita refer balik dekat sini. Okay, dia nak pertama table categories. Okay, select nama table category. Okay, so kita buat table category kat sini. Dia ada banyak table. Maksud dia apa sahaja yang kita dah query, yang kita dah put as a table, nanti dia akan keluar dekat sini. Ha, so kita just pilih saja. So dalam case kita ni, kita nak pilih table. Okay, kemudian table tadi kita nak pilih product type. Okay, kita sama ada dia kata double click pun boleh. Eh, ataupun kita click uh, this uh, right arrow button ni. Okay, kemudian... Kita pergi select. Okay, tengok apa dia select tadi lepas tu. Okay, lepas categories. Okay, dah select. Kita masuk pergi dekat menu. Eh, menu item. Table, menu item. Okay, dalam menu item dia ada apa dekat sini. Okay, dalam table dia ada product. ID, dia kita nak price saja, eh, so kita nak, ok, sebelum tu dia select table, product table, eh, product types product name, description ok, kita tengok dekat product dulu ok, mana product, product table ok, so product name ok, description ok, lagi apa Okay, so dekat sini dah ada lagi tadi. Okay, kita saya repeat balik categories. Kita dah ada. Sekejap. Eh, kita ulang balik. Sekejap sebentar. Macam confused dah ni. Okay, kita ambil categories, okay, product types. Okay, kemudian apa lagi dia select tadi? Eh, product table dia ada product name dengan uh, description. Okay. Product name dengan description. Okay, kita select product. Table product. Kita ambil product name. And also description. Okay. Kemudian, kita select table apa lagi ni? Dia akan select table sales unit. Eh, table sales unit. Okay, klik dekat table cari sales unit. Ada tak? Okay, di sini ada sales unit. Kita select apa tadi ni? Product name. Uh, under sales unit, kita select product name. So, jadi this one. Product name, kita book here. So, dia akan nampak dekat sini. Product type, product table ni datang daripada table product. Disebabkan dia ada dua nama yang sama. Product name dengan product name. Maknanya satu attribute, uh, satu from, apa tu, uh, primary 
Inky dan Foreign Key ni mak dia so dia akan keluarkan nama table kat depan ni product table sales unit ha, ni nama table dot product name sebab disebabkan product name ni nama yang sama jadi dia akan refer balik dia datang daripada table mana dia datang daripada table mana ha, kalau macam contoh yang ini tak ada nama table maksud dia ha, oh, nama ni unik lah eh, dekat dalam ni ok next dia minta kita select ok price eh, price ni datang daripada menu menu item ok kita select menu item mana menu ok mana kita ada menu item kita select price ok tengok sama tak ha, so kita dah ada apa tadi kat sini product types product names eh, based on uh, product table description product name eh, from sales unit and also price ok once kita dah settle ok sama dah ni eh kita klik next. So maksudnya dia pilih daripada mana tadi? Dia pilih daripada empat table yang berbeza. So bermakna dekat sini kita akan select more than one table. Eh, so dengan syarat kita dah buat dia punya join tu semua tu lah. Eh, dan kita punya primary key, foreign key tu semua betul. Eh, kita dah linkkan betul-betul primary key, foreign key. Kalau tak dia tak boleh dapat uh, dia punya uh, query ni nanti. Okay so dah perasan eh dekat sini kita akan buat berdasarkan kepada empat table. Tak perlu buat query pun tak apa. Kita buat pakai wizard je. Ha ni je contoh. Tadi yang the first one kita query dulu baru kita dapat report. Ha this one untuk yang report wizard ni biasanya kalau kebanyakan orang dia suka guna report wizard. Eh sebab kita boleh pilih apa kita nak. Eh kita boleh choose whatever kita want dengan syarat apa dia ERD dia kena betul, relationship dia kena betul. Primary key, foreign key dia kena betul. Okay So once kita dah settle, kita klik next. Ha okey. So kita tengok balik dekat dia punya Okay slide tadi supaya kita tak lost Okay so dekat sini kita dah nampak dah Dia ada product type by categories, product tables dan ni Maksud dia nanti dia akan display product type dulu And then under product tu, product type tu nanti dia akan keluarkan product tables And product name and also description apa nama dia Dan berapa sales unit dan juga price dia nanti ha, Jadi kalau kata kalau product tadi tu adalah kek Product type tu adalah cake. So, apa nama produk tadi tu? Dan apa description dia? Dan berapa sales unit yang kita dah jual dan berdasarkan pada price dia tadi ni. Uh, okay. So, kalau kata kita dah okay, satisfied, kita klik next. Uh, okay. Kita boleh modify lagi dekat sini. Okay. Dia kata apa tadi ni? Kita nak, if you are satisfied eh, with your own data, you can now modify the grouping level. Kita nak groupkan bagi apa? Eh, select a field from the list and click right arrow to add it as a new new label ha, Kalau kata kita nak groupkan by uh, sales unit tadi Kita klik sales unit okay. Kita klik uh, arrow tadi ni ha, So kita akan nampak sales unit ni dekat sini ha, So this one benda ni you all boleh try and error eh, You all boleh try and error Nanti bila dah dapat output tengok Oh kita nak macam ni ke kita nak macam ni Kalau tak nak kita patah balik kita boleh back eh, Kita boleh modify Eh, dia punya sequence ni Contoh macam ni tadi ni kan Dia boleh naik ke atas eh, Dia boleh turun balik ha, So maksud dia kita boleh Kita boleh modify kita punya display tu tadi eh, So kita nak apa sebenarnya Query kita tu kita nak kita nak display apa ha, itu, itu yang penting So that's why benda ni very subjective eh, Up to you all Nak buat apa dan sebagainya Okay dah settle Sales unit product names Okay kemudian kita klik next Okay, kita boleh sortkan dia by price dan kita nakkan descending. Maksud dia lah pada harga yang paling mahal kepada harga yang paling murah lah descending. Eh, lah pada yang paling tinggi kepada harga yang paling rendah. Okay, kemudian kita boleh klik. Ada lagi tak? Kita minta kat sini. Okay, kita klik next lah. Eh. Okay, so kita boleh pilih kita nak apa? Block ke outline ke? Yang ini pun layout ni pun nanti you boleh try and error. Yang mana yang you prefer, yang mana yang you rasa macam cantik di mata, sesuai untuk display eh? Dan uh, berdasarkan apa yang kita nak lah as an output tadi tu So kita pilih block, portrait orientation ni pun terpulang Kalau kata macam tak muat, kita boleh guna landscape Kalau ok, gunakan portrait Normally kita guna portrait dulu lah, eh? make sure dia ok Ok, kemudian kita klik next okay, Kita tukarkan nama dia kepada menu report contohnya So maksud dia kita nak keluarkan report berkenaan dengan menu Okay menu A tadi ni apa dia punya produk Menu B tadi apa dia punya berapa dia punya price Berapa dia punya quantity Okay so once kita dah settle Kita klik finish Okay so kita akan dapat something like this ha, Ni lah kalau kata you all nak keluarkan maklumat tersebut eh. uh, Contoh je dia ada cookies 
eh, ada cookies ni produk type dia dia ada sugar, chocolate chips, oatmeal dan sebagainya. Ha, dan kalau kata kita tak nampak tadi kita boleh adjust lah dekat sini ni. Kan? Macam kita boleh apa tu? Uh, put as one page tadi kalau kita tengok eh, dan kita boleh adjust dia punya size. Ha, macam kalau kita nak margin tadi pun boleh dan juga kalau kata kita nak nak kecilkan page setup ni tadi pun boleh lah eh, nak setup dan sebagainya. Okey, terpulang pada kita eh, untuk pastikan dia nampak. Ataupun maybe kita nak tukarkan kepada ha, landscape tadi lah. Kalau landscape mungkin dia boleh nampak dekat sini. So, kita dah nampak dah ada maklumat-maklumat yang ada dekat sini ni. Eh. So, terpulang pada apa yang kita nak display dekat sini. Okey, nampak tak? Okey, so... Yang ini ni pun sebenarnya ada something yang dah termasuk dekat sini ni. So, terpulang pada kita, kita nak buat macam mana. Jadi, at least eh, kita dah nampak dah. Eh, this is kind of uh, report yang kita boleh kita boleh generate. Eh, so, terpulang pada kita. Nanti adjust balik lah. Eh, kalau kata dia terkeluar ke terlebih pada margin ke, buat macam yang step yang pertama tadi tu. Okay. Kita boleh adjust balik dia punya size, eh, margin dan sebagainya. Okay. Dan kita boleh double check balik dekat dekat dia punya uh, apa tu print preview tadi tu ok alright so settle on this one cuma macam saya sebut tadi ini cuma just example bila you all nak buat nanti tak semestinya kena follow this example eh terpulang pada you all nak buat macam mana nak keluarkan report apa ok uh, so you all kena fikir sendiri nanti ok kita nak buat pasal apa tadi ni mungkin uh, kita nak tengok uh, employee kita nak dapatkan employee of the month eh maklumat employee of the month. So, kalau employee of the month, kita nak keluarkan apa? Kita nak keluarkan berapa banyak employee tersebut jual produk, contohnya. Dan berapa harga produk yang dijual. So, kita kita carilah maklumat dia tadi. Table employee, nama, mungkin kita nak keluarkan nama dia, nombor ID, okay. uh, produk apa yang dijual, dan berapa dia punya price, berapa quantity, eh, dan berapa total yang dia dijual. Dalam bulan Disember, contohnya. So, maksud dia mungkin kena link 3, 4 table dekat situ. Okay, kita select table-table ni nanti dia akan keluar semua tu. Ha, okay. So, this one is just a contoh saja. Eh, jadi, kita boleh nampak macam-macam lagi yang you all boleh buat dekat sini ni. Okay. Ha, so, kalau kata apa tu? Ha, kalau kata dah okay, ha, nanti kita boleh buat eh macam-macam perkara kita boleh buat. Okay. Setakat ni ada soalan tak? Laju sangat ke? Boleh follow tak? Kalau tak boleh follow, just refer balik dekat slide ni. Boleh follow tak? Setakat ni. Boleh eh? Boleh, sir. Boleh. Okey, jangan-jangan loss nanti sebab yang tadi saya dekat masa kita nak buat selection tadi tu. Kita dah pi, kita pilih empat table. Pastikan table yang kita tu semua memenuhi yang inilah. Ni contoh je macam saya sebut tadi. You all boleh pilih apa-apa pun you all nak. Eh, apa yang you all nak display. Tapi macam saya sebut tadi, as long as dia logic dan apa benda yang kita nak nak display tu. Eh, dia fulfill apa yang kita nak display tu. Okey, kita sambung. This one, settle, select layout title Then kita formatting uh, report Okay, kita klik dekat formatting report Goodwill Community Foundation Creating opportunities for a better life eh, Nanti kita formatkan balik report tu Nak make it uh, look very nice Access gives you a lot of flexibility When it comes to formatting a report You can use any fonts and colors that you want You can change the theme And you can even add a header, footer And company logo in this example, I'd like to start out by changing the fonts, and I want to put the descriptions in italics and make the product names bold. To do this, we'll need to be in Layout View. First, select the column that you want to change. You can also hold down the Shift key if you want to select multiple columns. Then go to the Format tab and choose the font that you want. I'm going to pick Cambria. Now to make the descriptions italic, I'll select them and click the italic command. And then I'll select the product type and make it bold. I think I'll go ahead and delete the field headers. Anybody who sees this menu will know what each column is, so they don't really need to be labeled. At this point, we can switch to print preview to see how it looks. The new font in italics really help to give it a more distinctive look. Now I'd like to add a page header which will include the address of our bakery. To do this, we'll need to go into Design View, which we haven't looked at yet. Here you can make some of the same types of adjustments you can make in Layout View. 
but it also lets you do some other things like adding headers and footers. You'll see several bars and find the one that says page header. You'll need to make sure that there's some empty space below it. And if there isn't any space, then you'll need to click on this border and drag it down. Then in the design tab, find the controls group and you'll want to click on this icon, which is the label command. And then in your page header, click and drag to create a box. You can type whatever you want here. And I'm going to type our bakery's address, phone number, and email address. And if you want, you can also edit the report header, page footer, and report footer in the same way. Let's go back to print preview to see how our header looks. I think it looks good, so I'm not going to change anything. Now, if you scroll down, you can see that today's date and the page number are in the page footer. These were automatically added for us because we created this report with the report wizard. However, you can also add them manually by going to either layout view or design view, and then clicking page numbers or date and time on the design tab. Now, one thing that will make this report look much more complete is a company logo. So I'll click the logo command, and then you can select the picture that you want, and then click OK. OK, now this may be hard to see, but our logo has been added in the report header, and it has an orange box around it. I'm just going to drag this corner to make it larger, and then I'll move it over to the center of the page. I'll also move the title to the center. And I think this title would look better if it just said Menu. And finally, you can change the overall look of your report by selecting a different theme. A theme is a set of colors and fonts that applies to your entire database, and that means it can affect your other objects as well. If you want, you can even mix and match colors and fonts from different themes. All of these little details that we've added to our report make a big difference. And now it actually looks like a real menu that we can print and give to our customers. How are we going to design our report or formatting the report? Okay, so this is up to you. Like you got nanti, bila you order, dah buat, start buat project, nanti play around with this one. Eh, uh, so macam mana kita nak nak modify tadi tu? Okay, so for example, ni ni pun saya saya punya ni pun data dia ada berbeza sikit dengan dia, tapi tak apalah. Eh, uh, so nanti awak boleh modify balik ikut pada yang kita nak tu. Okay, so kita boleh select dekat sini di bawah ni layout view. Okay, macam dia sebut tadi, sales unit, eh, ada price. Okay, so modify lah ikut apa yang sesuai. Okay, so dekat sini pun macam ada something ni eh, yang tak nampak ni ada price kat sini ni dah hilang. Okay, tak, tak apa nanti awak boleh boleh modify balik eh, macam saya sebut ni. ni. Mungkin yang ni boleh buang eh, kalau kita tak nak. Tadi mungkin saya dah tersilap uh, klik. Okay, so kalau kata kita nak tukarkan let's say for example font. Okay, uh, terpulang lah pada kita. Eh, terpulang pada kita. So yang ni pun saya rasa just, eh, just lah apa yang awak rasa yang macam awak rasa sesuai. Okay, pergi dekat sini mungkin nak adjustkan dia punya apa tu uh, italic eh kemudian dekat sini mungkin nak bold uh, yang ni saya rasa yang ni just uh, play around with the apa tu formatting eh so cuma saya punya hint dekat sini simple je kalau boleh kalau you nak modify eh nak buat kalau boleh color dia mestilah something yang look nice eh dia mesti ada kontra kalau kata background dia gelap color dia mesti cerah Background nak buat warna hitam ke, warna biru ke, font color dia buat warna putih contohnya. Okay, kita cerahkan. Kalau kata macam ni, belakang dia, background dia putih, font color dia hitam. Ha, jangan sampai jadi macam sekolah tadika. Ha, maksud sekolah tadika, sekejap kat sini warna merah, dekat sini sekejap warna biru, kejap dekat sini warna hijau. Ha, budak tak sekolah tadika tak apa, dia suka. Kan, dia main dengan color-color ni. Ha, untuk you all ni, menampakkan dia uh, simple and nice. Ha, okay, so itu maksud dia. So, contoh lagi tadi, dikatakanlah kalau kita dah settle tadi, kita boleh view. Dia akan dapat something like this, macam saya sebut eh, tadi. Dan kita mungkin kita boleh pergi dekat uh, design tadi ni. 
Ha, okay, contoh kita ada header kan nak masukkan header eh, so terpulang pada you all eh, kalau kata nak put as a header pun boleh masuk header tadi eh, boleh put something eh, kemudian mungkin boleh put uh, page number okay, date and time or maybe a logo okay. carilah dekat mana ada tak picture contohnya eh, tak ada kalau ada picture ambil je lah mana-mana picture eh. ha, so nanti bila you all buat nanti kena masukkan lah benda-benda ni Eh, all these element tadi ni ok so masukkan logo masukkan page header tadi ni eh, buat macam mana yang dia display tadi eh, dia buat tadi ha, so kita boleh masukkan something dekat sini ok dan kita boleh eh, mungkin kita boleh tukar dia punya apa tu description dekat sini kita boleh masukkan font eh, kita boleh masukkan text eh, untuk kita buat dekat sini so maknanya dekat sini terpulanglah pada you all nak buat apa yang ni saya just Buat je, hentam-hentam je eh, Kita tengok supaya nanti bila kita dah view Nanti kita boleh dapat Oh sorry, parameter tak nak Ni bukan parameter Okay, ni boleh kalau tak nak kita boleh delete Okay, masukkan dekat sini contohnya Okay, ni ni ini ini maknanya button Kalau kita nak buat button eh, Dia boleh buat button dekat sini So, kalau kita klik button tu Tapi yang ini kita pakai makro sikit lah eh, Okay, yang ni tak apa Yang ni advance sikit Okay, kalau kata kita gunakan label tadi ni Okay Ha, ni contoh, masukkanlah apa something ok dan dia akan dapat something lain lah eh, dan, logo, eh, dan sebagainya ataupun maybe kalau kita pergi balik dekat design ok, kita boleh masukkan, kita boleh select the themes tadi ni, ha, terpulang lah you all nak macam mana ok, so bila kita view dia akan tukar, ok so yang ini saya just to eh, buat je, sebab benda ni bergantung kepada design you all tu nanti eh, apa yang you all nak, nanti kena modify balik lah betul-betul, sebab kalau kita buat pun nanti, bila kita nak buat kita punya sendiri, nanti of course you all kena modify balik. So, kita dah boleh eh, gunakan all this, apa tu, uh, information yang ada dekat dalam ni. Eh, boleh tukar font, boleh tukar color, kalau you all nak, eh, boleh gunakan this control menu ni dekat sini ni. Ini pun banyak benda yang boleh buat lagi ni. Okay. Uh, right, mungkin nampak macam tak sama tadi, bila saya buat tadi, tapi tak apa, eh, at least. You all dah nampak dah Ada tempat boleh masukkan logo Kalau ada gambar okay. Kita play around dengan dua benda ni aja. Satu layout view Satu lagi design view ha, Ini tempat-tempat yang penting ni Yang you all boleh Boleh main Kalau kata tak nak Kita boleh delete balik okay. Alright Ni kalau kata kita ni, ni semua ni kita boleh modify ni eh, Kita nak buang Kita nak delete okay. Kita nak kita nak move So benda ni kena perlukan praktis Eh, benda-benda macam ni kena perlukan praktis. So, kalau kata you all nak buat something, you all kena praktis. Maknanya, kena modify baliklah benda ni. Contoh, kita nak alihkan. Okay. Ha, kena pastikan kita select. Okay. Kita tengok perat. Itu terpulang. Maknanya, benda ni memang kalau ajar pun, mungkin kalau you boleh tengok contoh pun, mungkin saya nak contoh. Tapi, kena buat sendiri. Eh, buat sendiri baru kita akan nampak. Eh, macam mana kita nak design balik. So, design ni subjektif. Up to you all. Cuma tadi saya pesan. Okay. Nampak sedap di mata lah memandang eh? Dari segi pemilihan colour, warna okay? ha, Dan jangan terlalu banyak sangat colour Jadi macam sekolah tadika ha, Itu saja. Ha, okay. So settle mungkin you all boleh view balik eh? Dekat sini ni Dan dia akan dapat something like this lah okay? ha, So this is our report lah contohnya ha, Mungkin nampak tak sama dengan Dengan apa yang ada dekat sini Tapi kalau you all nak, you nak nampak sama boleh, boleh, boleh tengok balik contoh yang ada dekat sini ni Okay, boleh tengok balik contoh dekat sini. Nanti kita boleh follow balik step by step lah dekat sini ni. Eh, boleh follow step by step. Macam mana dia buat. Okay, nak besarkan page header. Kena buat sendiri ni. Kalau tak buat memang tak ada. Dia memang susah. Eh, so, kalau kata macam susah sangat, nanti cari balik jalan dia. Macam mana cara kita nak drag, nak drop, okay, nak tukarkan font <coughs> and so on. Okay, so settle lah on this, on this part. Contoh, contoh macam nak masukkan uh, date and time ni pun terpulang pada kita nak format macam mana. Uh, so, benda-benda ni rasanya kadang-kadang kita dah biasa buat dah ni. Uh, cuma kita nampakkan dia menarik je lah. Eh, uh, bila kita klik nanti. Okay. So, appearance, settle, pilih logo, besarkan ke, eh, uh, adjust dia punya size. Terpulang juga pada kita. Dan kita boleh select the team. Team ni pun terpulang pada you all. Yang ni dia yang memang dia dah default lah. Pilih lah mana yang you all nak. Yang mana yang rasa cantik di mata tu pilih lah. Okay. Kemudian settle on that one. Okay, kita continue. Okay, ada apa-apa soalan tak setakat ni? Ha, cuba bila part-part modify ni, 
ikut sendirilah. Okay. Okay, ada apa-apa soalan tak sangat ni? So far okay. 926. Kita sambung sikit lagi boleh? Please. Sambung sikit lagi. Okay. Uh, lesson 15, modifying table. Mungkin sampai lesson 16 lah kot. Eh, kita tengok balik. Kita Yang ni, yang ni kita dapat tak balik macam mana kita nak modify. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Sometimes you may decide that you want to add or modify fields in your tables. Access makes it easy to do this, although there are some important things that you'll need to consider. There are three different rules that you can apply to control the type of data that the fields can accept, and these are data types, character limits, and validation rules. To get started, make sure that you have a table open. I'm using the customers table. We're going to scroll all the way to the right until you see a blank field that says click to add. And when you click on it, you'll see a list of all of the data types that you can choose from. Short text is the default option, and this is the type that you'll use for regular text such as a person's name or address. You'll also use it for numbers that aren't used in calculations, like a phone number or zip code. For any numbers that you might want to do calculations with, you'll need to choose number. For example, we would use this for the quantities of an item that were sold. If you're dealing with money, then you'll choose currency. And if you choose date and time, then when you're editing that field, you'll see a calendar icon which you can click to select a date. But in this case, I just want a simple yes or no answer, so I'll choose this one. And this adds a checkbox for each record. Then you can type in the name of your field. I'm going to name it Add to Mailing List. Then I'll resize this field. Now we can just check each customer who wants to be on our mailing list. And you can also click and drag the name to move the field wherever you like. If you decide that you need a different data type for a field, then you can just select it and then go to the Fields tab and click the Data Type drop-down arrow. I'm going to change this to text so I can add additional information in this field. Some of our customers want to receive our weekly newsletter, but others just want to hear about our special events. Now you should be very careful about changing the data type, because it is possible to lose some of your data if you change it to the wrong type. In some fields, you may want to narrow down the data even further by adding a character limit, and you can only do this with text fields. For example, we want all of the states to be formatted the same way, so we're only using the two-letter state abbreviations. If some of the records say NC and others say North Carolina, then Access won't know to group them together, which means our sorts, filters, and queries may not work right. In the Fields tab, find the Field Size box. The default field size is 255 characters, but I'm going to change it to 2. And you may get a warning message here, so if you're sure you want to change the field size, click Yes. In this case, setting a character limit isn't quite good enough because somebody could still type a two-letter code that's not a real state, for example, NX. To prevent that, we need to be a lot more specific about what types of input this field will accept, and we'll do that by adding a validation rule. In the Fields tab, go to the Validation command on the far right and select Field Validation Rule. Here, I'm going to type each state abbreviation in quotation marks, and I'm separating each one with the word OR. And this may take a while. So this expression is just looking for exact matches, but if you want, you can create validation rules using the same syntaxes that we talked about in the query lessons. For example, you could use the LIKE syntax to set a validation rule that only allows text that ends with CAKE. Or, if you're using numerical values, you could use GREATER THAN to make sure that none of our quantities are negative. When you're done, click OK. Whenever you create a validation rule, it's important to create a validation message, and this option is also under the validation command. This message will pop up whenever somebody tries to type in something that doesn't follow the validation rule. The message should briefly describe the rule so that the user can then make the necessary corrections. In this case, I'll just mention that it needs to be a two-letter abbreviation. 
Now you won't need to add a character limit or validation rule to all of your fields, but you can add one or both of them whenever you want to control the types of information that your field will accept. Number one is modifying the table. Okay. Uh, kemudian kita boleh add, eh, move, eh, adding fields, eh, dan sebagainya. Uh, yang ini pun sebenarnya kita boleh uh, buat eh, uh, pada bila-bila masa. Tapi dengan syarat jaga balik kita punya ERD tu, eh, Entity Relationship Diagram. Kalau kita tak boleh just simply add nanti, eh, takut dia punya data dia akan akan berubah. Okay. So kita select customer. Okay. Double click. Right, so kalau kita move to the right and eh, last kali kat sini dia ada sebut ada click to add apa tu uh, column kita kita boleh tambahlah apa yang kita nak eh short text ke number okay currency and, and so on uh, so dalam case ni mungkin dia, dia select tadi yes or no uh, mungkin kita boleh check uncheck je lah eh yes or no tu okay so kalau kita nak tengok kita boleh view semula okay so Kita boleh dapat dah dekat sini eh? Dekat dia punya order Cuma tadi macam dia, dia tak bagi kita Kita nak view okay. So tengok dekat sini dia add Kemudian kita boleh move the field eh? Kita boleh gerakkan field tersebut uh, Maknanya kita boleh adjust eh? Kita klik okay, Dekat sini dia bagi nama dulu tadi Apa tadi ni Apa tadi nama dia bagi okay. Add to mailing list ha, contoh. So boleh follow je lah kat sini Add to mailing list. Okay, so one setter. Okay, kita boleh mungkin kita nak move kan dekat sini ni kita boleh just drag and drop je lah macam ni. Eh nampak kalau kata warna hitam tu, line hitam tu, ah kat situ lah tempat kalau kata kita nak dia duduk dekat sebelah zip code in between. Okay, tak apa, tak ada masalah. Eh, ah so mana mana saja apa apa saja kita boleh boleh rearrange balik. Eh, table tersebut, kedudukan table tu ah, ni, this, ni, apa tu yang kita panggil sebagai kita boleh re rearrange balik ok, settle on that one ok, so customer kita view ok, kemudian tadi dia tulis apa tadi, ah, ok, kat sini yes Eh, untuk weekly report lah apa semua tu dah ada kat sini ok so tu pulang eh, maksud dia kita boleh add apa-apa sajalah dekat sini ha, dan kita ke, macam saya sebut juga tadi eh, so you all boleh try and error kalau kata nak guna short text guna short text macam saya sebut lagi tu eh, kalau kata kita gunakan nombor ID kan yang ada kombinasi combination uh, letter dengan number so kita gunakan short short text eh, kalau kata kita guna number only uh, boleh gunakan number especially untuk kita nak count Eh, nak buat kiraan dan sebagainya Kita gunakan number Ok so the next one Ok dia dah settle Ok kita boleh tukarkan dia punya uh, Apa tu Formatting untuk Validation uh, Ok so katakanlah dekat sini Ok kalau kata nak buat hyperlink pun boleh Dekat sini ni Maksudnya kita klik dekat sini Nanti dia terus pergi dekat email ni Kalau kita setting email kita dekat Uh, notebook kita nanti dia boleh terus pergi buka dekat email yang tertentu ok, uh, okay. so pun boleh kalau kita gunakan hyperlink ni ok, kemudian kita boleh buat field character uh, ok, kita boleh limit yang macam saya sebut itulah, eh, panjang nama eh, dan sebagainya semua benda-benda ni ada limitation ok, kalau kata contoh dekat sini ok, kita pergi dekat table ok, sorry, field uh, dekat sini dia nampak dah ada field size Okay, kalau default dia adalah 255 mungkin kalau kita nak tukar dua sajalah eh jadi orang tak akan buat mistake eh maknanya kalau siapa yang akan masukkan dekat sini dia tak akan buat mistake ha, so yang seterusnya kita boleh buat validation okey kita boleh buat validation dia sebut tadi tu okey maksud dia kita nak apa dia punya rules ha dekat sini ni dia dah tuliskanlah eh al only o ak so maksud dia apa-apa saja yang berkaitan. Kalau macam kita postcode, mungkin kalau kata you all nak listkan postcode, dia tak postcode. Ataupun kalau kata kita nak buat uh, state, negeri kan, kita boleh letak negeri kat sini. Selangor, Melaka, Terengganu dan sebagainya. Orang kalau dia masuk selain daripada nama yang kita letak tu, uh, nanti dia akan keluar 
message. Uh, so, of course, kita kena letak fill validation validation message tadi ni. Uh, so, kata kalau kata kita nak letak kat sini, uh, state must be uh, state yang available ataupun yang ada dekat Malaysia sahaja. Eh? In Malaysia only. So, kita dah listkan Melaka, Terengganu dan sebagainya. Uh, tu contohlah. Eh? Maknanya kita boleh buat validation. Uh, kalau dalam kes ni, dia sebut state yang ada dekat US lah. Eh? Hanya dua letter, postal code only. Eh? NC, NY, eh? AL, AC dan sebagainya. Uh, so, kalau orang duduk Amerika, dia tahulah eh? benda ni. Okay, so lain rasanya tak ada. Dia dah buat validation rules. Dia dah buat message. Okay, kemudian dia dah settle. Okay, kita boleh masukkan more table options. Okay, dah tak ada apa lah tu. Eh, kalau kata kita nak masukkan subtotal pun boleh. Eh, kita buat calculation. Eh, so that's why kalau macam subtotal ni kita boleh tambah kemudian. Eh, so kita boleh buat eh, subtotal ni mungkin price. Dia kena kalikan dengan kuanti quantity. So, dia akan dapat subtotal dekat sini. Okay. So, settle on that part. Okay. Ada apa-apa soalan tak setakat ni? Validation ni pun macam saya sebut. Eh. Kemaknanya you all kena try and error jugalah. Eh. Try and error. Eh. Cuba buat semula. Tengok apa berlaku. Okay. Dan mungkin you all boleh apa tu? Ha, boleh dapatkan sendirilah nanti. Eh, so, benda-benda ni semua nanti terpulang pada you all. Eh, once you all dah tahu, okay, you all kena eh, pastikan kita check balik, eh, kita view balik, kita buat balik dan kena buat sentiasa ni. Eh, sebab dia dia ada apa tu? Uh, oh, kat sini dah ada add. You know, eh. So, maksud dia, dia dah ada dah. Ni boleh, mungkin saya boleh delete lah ni. Kalau kata nak delete, boleh delete. So, terpulang pada you all. Kena, kena try and error. Eh, nak tak nak kena try. Sebab tu kita kena buat pro project. Eh. So, project tu nanti kita boleh try and error lah apa yang kita nak buat. Maksudnya kita akan buat from scratch. Eh. You kena start buat tables, eh. kena buat form, kena buat query and also kena buat re report. Okay. So far ada soalan tak? Dah pukul 9.38. Okay. Mungkin saya try continue satu lagi sebab kita tadi start lewat sikit. Okay. Lesson 16. Creating a forms. Okay, so mungkin kalau kalau kita nak berhenti pun boleh. Eh, creating forms ni mungkin kita boleh buat minggu depan. Tapi nanti saya back to tutorial, kita check balik. Kita dah dekat mana. Okay, kita dah dekat sini. Uh, okay, forms. Sekarang pukul 9, 39. Okay, saya habiskan form boleh tak? Eh, saya habiskan form. Mungkin sampai dekat 16, 17. Eh, mungkin dalam masa 10 minit lagi. Boleh eh? Kita create form dulu. Kita habiskan sikit lagi. Yang ni pun simple je ni. Create form ni. Goodwill Community Foundation. Creating opportunities for a better life. Creating a form can save you a lot of time in the long run because it makes it easier to input the data into one or more tables. And in this video, we're just going to go over the basics of creating a form from a table, adding additional fields, and inserting a drop-down menu into the form. In the navigation pane, you'll need to select the table that you want to use, and you don't need to open it, just make sure that the name is highlighted. I'm using the Customers table. Then in the Create tab, you can click the Form command, and it will create a new form that contains all of the fields from your table. And before you do anything else, you should save this form. I'll call it Customers Form. Sometimes your form will include a subform. Access will create one of these if your table is linked to another table. For example, here our customers table is linked to the orders table, so the subform will include a list of any orders that the customer has placed. In many cases, this may be useful, but if you don't need the subform, you can delete it by just clicking on it and pressing the delete key. Now, if we later decided to add a field to the customers table, it would not appear automatically in this form, so we would need to add it manually. To do this, you can select Add Existing Fields from the Design tab, and this will open up the Field list, which shows all of the fields from this table. You can just double-click a field to add it to the form, or if you want to add a field from a different table, click Show All Tables, and then locate the table and field that you want. But for now, we have all of the fields that we need, so I'm just going to close this pane. With some fields, you may want to add a drop-down menu, 
which Access calls a combo box. This can make the form easier to use because the user can just click on the value that they want. I'm going to create a combo box for the Add to Mailing List field. In the Design tab, find the Controls group and select the Combo Box command. Then you can just click on the form where you want it to go. The Combo Box wizard will open up, and if you have a long list of values, then you can click the first option to pull the values from a table or a query. But I'm going to select the second option so that I can type the exact values that I want. Here you can type in each value, and in most cases you'll just use the first column. I'm typing three different values, and I'm pressing the Tab key after each one to go to the next row. And if you need to, you can adjust the width of the column, and then click Next. Now this next step is very important. When the user chooses a value from the combo box, we want the value to be stored in the customer's table. We'll need to select the second option and pick the field that we want. In this case, our combo box is going to be asking about the mailing list, so I'll choose the Add to Mailing List field. And then in the last step, you can type a label. I'm going to call it Add to Mailing List. And click Finish. The combo box will appear here, and we don't need the original field anymore, so we can delete it. To test the combo box, we can switch to Form View, and you can see that our three options appear here. So now we have a working form, and in the next couple of videos, we're going to make some more adjustments to it to make it better suit our needs. form okey kita just click pada mana-mana table yang kita nak or any query yang kita nak okey so for example kat sini kita select table customer tadi ni and kita pergi dekat create just click sahaja form ha, nanti kita boleh buat form design form uh, from apa tu blank form wizard pun ada dekat sini so for the time being untuk yang the first one kita just click form and automatically dia akan appear dekat sini eh Ha, so kita terus dah nampak dah ada form dekat sini macam dia sebut tadi eh, kalau dia ada relationship dengan table lain mungkin dia boleh keluarkan dia punya sub form di bawah ni eh, kadang-kadang perlu sebab macam contoh kita nak tengok customer ni mungkin dia datang beli pada hari yang berbeza kan jadi kita nak tengok berapa kali dia datang berapa kali dia beli ha, mungkin sub form ni membantu eh, jadi kita just leave it jelah sub form ni so kalau tak nak kita boleh di delete so kalau kita tak kalau kata kita nak tambah semula kita boleh add dekat sini tadi lah Eh, kita gunakan add existing field. Ha, so kita boleh search eh, all tables, eh, table mana yang ada relationship dengan dia. Kemudian kita boleh expand kan dan kita boleh klik ha, maklumat-maklumat yang kita nak. Okay, this one also, macam saya sebut, you all kena try and error. Eh, sebab apa? Apa yang you all nak display tu nanti? Eh, based on your punya project, apa yang you all nak display? Apa maklumat yang you all nak, nak tunjuk ataupun maklumat yang kita nak masukkan dekat dalam form tersebut? Eh, yang kita nak klik ataupun kita nak save. Ha, form ni maksud dia kena, kena bezakan form dengan queries. Dengan report. Eh, form maksud dia apa yang kita nak enter nanti. Eh, bila kita run dia nanti. Kita akan enterkan maklumat ni tadi ni. Ha, maknanya kita kena masukkan nama ID. Contoh customer tu datang kat kedai kita. Kita tanya dia. Tuan pernah datang kat kedai ni tak? Dia kata tak pernah. Kalau tak pernah maksud dia kita kena key in balik maklumat dia. Ha, kalau dia kata pernah kita just search sajalah. Eh, kita pergi dekat query. Kita search saja, okay. Mungkin boleh bagi nombor ID ke dan sebagainya. Dan kita klik. Ha, tu macam normal yang kita gunakan apa-apa sistem kan. Okay, so contoh macam dia sebut tadi ni. Kalau tak nak yang ni, kita boleh delete. Kalau nak tambah, boleh tambah dekat sini. Eh, you all boleh try and error. Okay, tambah dan sebagainya. Kemudian boleh gunakan <coughs> control button dekat sini ni. Ha, contohnya nak gunakan combo box ke, okay. List box ke okay, dan sebagainya. So, boleh terus gunakan. And this one digunakan apa tadi ni? Combo box. Kalau tak silap saya. Okay. Yang penting kena save dulu. Okay. Kita save dulu. Bagikan dia customers form. Contoh. Okay. Click OK. Oh, dia maknanya dia dah ada dah. Okay. So, dia dah ada dah customer form. Maknanya memang kat sini dia dah buat. Kita carilah ada tak form yang nama customer di sini ni. Eh, dah ada dah customer form ni. So, 
Kita boleh klik balik kat sini ni tadi ni. Oh, yang ni dia dah modify dah, dah cantik dah. Okay, ini untuk next video lah rasanya ni. Okay, so tak apa kalau kata you all nak buat pun nanti boleh save balik. Okay, customer tadi ni. Kita bagi nama lain sikit lah. Okay, kalau kata nak save. Eh, customers one form. Ha, tu contoh. Okay, bagi dia different. Okay, kemudian kita boleh tambah tadi lah. Eh, kita pergi dekat design. Eh, dia ada control. Eh, kita boleh masukkan combo box. Eh, ataupun kita nak masukkan something. Eh, dekat dalam tu kita boleh add. Eh, dekat situ. So, for example, dekat sini dia masukkan Okay, ni dah ada addings uh, combo box eh kita masukkan combo box kat sini this one eh combo box kita boleh cari dekat sini ni list box check box eh this one is combo box okey kita masukkan somewhere dekat sini okey kita klik okey kita put dekat sini okey dia kata apa mana macam dia sebut tadi i will type the value that i want contohnya kalau next tadi tu uh, type lah apa-apa tadi eh maksud dia Ikut pada contoh yang ada dekat sini ni. Okay. Dia type apa tadi ni. No. Yes. Weekly. Okay. Yes dan sebagainya. Eh, yes. Special event and offer. Okay. So boleh follow. For example tu. Okay. Yang pertama buat no. Okay. Kemudian. Yes. Weekly. Okay. Kemudian. Yes. Alright boleh tulis kat sini special event and offers ok kalau kata tak cukup kita besarkan ok besarkan sikit biar dia nampak semua ok klik next ok dia kata apa store that value in this field ok nak masuk kat mana tadi add to mailing list contohnya next ok bagi nama eh, label untuk combo tadi so add to mailing list ok finish so dia akan dapat kat sini ha, ni, ni boleh buang lah tadi dia kata eh, kita boleh buang lah yang ni sebab kita dah ada combo box jadi kalau kita run kita view ha, dekat sini ni biar kalau kita klik mana masa kita kita nak key in maklumat mak, apa tu uh, pelanggan tersebut kita tanya dia nak mailing list tak kalau dia kata no no kalau dia kata yes boleh 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 kita nak weekly lah kita klik weekly ok dan sebagainya lah ok Ha, dan bila kita save nanti, bila kita masukkan, kita save dalam table, nanti dia akan nampaklah perkataan yes, weekly eh, dan sebagainya. Ha, ni maksud dia. Eh, so, ha, kita buat simple form, nanti kita modify the form tu. Jadi, saya rasa mungkin cukuplah untuk setakat ni dulu. Okay, kita berhenti dekat sini. Nanti kita sambung pada customizing form, setting with the property sheets ni. Okay, so nanti kita sambung kat sini. Nanti kita buka balik. Okay, kita sambung dekat sini lah nanti. Eh, so form tadi ni ok creating form dan and then sampai lah kepada kita buat formatting and also designing your own database ha, so nampak macam tak boleh habis juga kita sampai ke 16 je nanti kita ulang balik eh 16 tu kita create form dan kita sambung dekat sini ok setakat ni ada soalan setakat ni ada soalan so sambil-sambil tu saya nak minta you all buat juga eh masing-masing kena buat kena test eh tak boleh dengar saja eh kena cuba sendiri Baru tahu nak klik macam mana. Kadang-kadang bila kita tengok macam senang. Eh, bila kita buat tu kadang-kadang macam jadi tak jadi kan. Nak klik pun susah. Nak maksimal, nak minimal pun payah. Ha, so kena kena apa tu. Kena kena buat sendiri. Alright. So ada soalan tak setakat ni? Ada soalan? Tak ada. So kalau tak ada dah kita bukan 9.50. Saya kata cukup lama dulu untuk hari ni. Eh, kita berhenti dulu. InsyaAllah nanti kita sambung pada hari Rabu minggu depan. Dan juga pada hari Jumaat untuk the lab session. Okay, so I will stop presenting. So with that, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. InsyaAllah kita jumpa lagi.